the automobile is originally at rest at s equals 0. If its speed is increased by v dot equals 0.05 t squared feet per second squared, where t is in seconds, determine the magnitude of its velocity and acceleration when t equals 18 seconds. Okay, so v dot. So that v dot is just a different notation of saying dv dt, right? Which we know is also known as acceleration. And you didn't, you don't have to know that because you can only, you can look just at the units, right? The units are measurement of distance divided by the time squared. So that is the unit for acceleration. Not sure why it's in feet instead of meters, but we can just deal with it. Cool. Uh, so there, there are three possibilities here because you see the uh, the car. You have the car here. It's going on a straight line, and then when it travels 300 feet, it then enters a circular motion because it goes into a curve, and then it finishes the curve over here, and then it continues on a straight path. So there are three possibilities. After 18 seconds, without doing any math, there's no way of, of knowing. But after the 18 seconds that we're looking for, maybe the car is still on the straight path. Maybe it's in halfway through the curve, or maybe it's done with it and it's on the next straight path. Let's put it that way. Okay, so there's no way of us knowing where it will be before we do some math. And the reason why we want to know is because depending on where it is, our um, the magnitude of the acceleration will be different, right? Because the magnitude of the acceleration, if it's over here, it's just going to be the uh, we can just do straight the equation that was given to us and plug in 18, and that's it, all done. However, if the car is here, we know there will be two components to the acceleration, right? One, the engine one, T, and another one that wants to keep the car centripetal one, wants to keep the car in that circular motion there. So first thing we need to know is where the car will be after 18 seconds. To do that, what I'll do is I'll calculate how long it takes for the car to leave S equals zero and reach the 300 feet. Okay, and s, if you know s, what they're calling s is a vector that leaves on s equals zero and goes where the car is. And it's, it travels on a straight path, right? Straight horizontal path and destroying. So if the car is over here, the vector is here. If the car is over here, the vector s would be here, right? Okay, so let's find out where the car would be after um, 18 seconds. So let me start by grabbing this uh, acceleration equation and finding out what is the velocity equation because we know the acceleration is 0.05 t squared. And we also know acceleration is just how the velocity is changing with time. So therefore, 0.05 t squared dt equals dv. We can integrate both ends. And here we'll be going from 0 to t. And over here, I'll be going from v naught to v. This will become, let's zoom in. This will be 0 0.05 t cubed divided by 3. And this will be v minus v naught. And beginning, when we leave from rest, our car is, when t is 0, our car is at rest. That is when s is 0 as well. So that's right here before our situation starts. Right? So we can get rid of this guy here. Okay, so in other words, v equals, let's just rewrite it, 0 0.05 t the third divided by three equals v. So that's an equation that we have for any time, velocity for any given time. But we also know velocity is just how the position in the, is changing with time, right? And in this case here, let's do that. Okay, so we can do 0 0.05 t third dt divided by three equals dx. And we can integrate over here from zero to t. And over here from x naught to x. And the only reason why I'm not using s instead of x is because s is only tracking a horizontal distance, wherein, whereas an x is traveling, is tracking everything that is going on. Um, 4 is 12. And over here we're going to have delta x. Okay, so now we have an equation that tells us how the car is moving in respect to time. And what I want to know is how long it takes for the car to reach the 300 feet mark, which is where it enters the curve, right? Because if we find out that that is, it, it takes, um, I don't know, 20 seconds to reach the 300 feet, then it means that's still on the straight path. If it takes less than 18 seconds, for instance, 12 seconds, so that's going to be in, it's going to be either here or here, right? Cool. So let's make that equal to 300 feet. And that's all for t. So t will be this that root, fourth root, or something like that, of uh, 300 times 12 divided by 0 0.05. And this ends up being 16.4. Well, so it takes 16.4 seconds for the car to reach this position here. 
So the question is asking us what will be the velocity in the acceleration at 18 seconds, so we can be fairly sure it will be somewhere in the curve when that happens. So if it's here, we're going to have two components to the acceleration. One AT, which is fairly easy for us to determine, and one AC, that will require us to determine the velocity, right? Because we know the centripetal acceleration is proportional to the velocity, to function of the velocity divided by the radius. The radius, of course, in this case being V, through 240 feet. So, what is AT? Well, AT, it's quite simple because we have an equation for it that was given from the beginning, right? Which is 0 0.05 T squared feet per second squared. So if we want to know what is the um, at at time equals at t equals 18 seconds, then at is equal to 0 0.05 18 squared, which gives us 16.2 feet per second squared. Now, if we want to know what the centripetal acceleration is, we need to find the velocity. So we want velocity velocity at t equals 18 seconds. And that will be, thankfully we have an equation for that. Where's our equation for velocity? Here it is. So I need to do use this at t equals 18 seconds. And if we want to have the centripetal acceleration, that will be just v squared over radius. So where we have v squared, I can put 0 0.05, 18 cubed, divided by 3, and I'm squaring the velocity. And I need to divide that by v radius, which is 200 and 40 feet. So this gives me 39.366 feet per second squared. Okay, and then finally remember that, where is the, the drawing? Probably the best place to remember. The magnitude of the acceleration, if we have two, will be the contribution of the centripetal, the contribution of the tangent form. So we can just apply Pythagoras to find out what is the magnitude of acceleration at time equals 18. So acceleration, yeah. M for magnitude will be just the square root of 39.366 squared plus, what was the other one? 16.2 squared. We're taking the square root of that. So that gives me about 42.6 feet per second squared. So this is the magnitude of the acceleration when time equals 18 seconds. The other thing we need is to find the velocity, right? So I could have done that here. I missed my chance. The velocity. So the velocity, the magnitude of the velocity is just 0 0.018 divided by 3, and that is 97.2 feet per second. So that is another part of our answer. Right. So that's that. If you have questions, let me know.